Leaders are people who see something that needs doing, and they do it. And that's certainly the case with Ahmed Eddie Ibrahim, the founder of Fresh Pro. And that's who we're talking to in this episode of Walking the Walk. Inspire, empower, and guide people to their very best. These are the people who are walking the walk. Your host, the original sensei leader, Jim Bouchard. Ahmed Ibrahim started the Fresh Pro company to fill a need to connect farmers in Kenya with markets for fresh produce. He's an engineer by trade, but he saw a need and he designed a solution. And in the process, he's living our ideals of human-centric leadership and dealing with his customers and the people he serves as leader of Fresh Pro. So, Eddie, that's why I wanted to hear your story. Let's talk about how you got started on this adventure. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Jim, for having me. Fresh Pro started about three years ago, and uh, we came here. Uh, uh, we wanted to give farmers a waste management solution. We designed an anaerobic digester, which was smart, and we wanted to see how we can be able to give this farmers a solution. The area we chose, it's, a, it's about 10 kilometer radius. It's an area called Gidunguri, sub county. It's in Kembu County. And this area is very famous for milk. And the solution that we wanted to give them is actually a waste management solution because it has one of the highest animal concentration uh, in sub-Saharan Africa within a small uh, radius. So we, 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 we hit the road and wanted to give them a solution. By the time we visited and uh, surveyed uh, uh, some, some 1,000 farmers, we came to realize that that is not the immediate uh, 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 need. We came to realize that the number one major problem uh, was actually um, uh, lack of access, uh, lack of market access to their farm mm-hmm. produce. Because all of them were farmers, all of them were farming, and uh, this is a problem that you, you needed to visit a large number of farmers to come to realize, uh, yes, uh, which waste management solution is, is a problem. Uh, but besides that, the only other way solution is to create um, an agricultural revolution so that they can be able to better use uh, this waste uh, and to utilize it for economical gains. So at the end of uh, at the end of the research phase, uh, we developed Freshwood. That is how Freshwood came about. It was a research. Uh, it was a result of a research uh, of visiting over a thousand four hundred farmers, and uh, you can believe it, Jim. We were visiting farmers after farmers <laughs> who had produce rotting in their farms. You know that's one and of the, the that's same one of the time. Most... Yeah, that's one of the most fascinating parts of your story is that, you know, so many people yeah. start with an idea and exactly. and sometimes they're good ideas. You know, I'm not d- diminishing that at all, but too often people will run with that idea without really getting on the ground, right, and understanding what the human needs are. But that's what you did. I mean, exactly. you, you visited over a thousand folks, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, we came to realize that the immediate, uh, immediate problem was actually... Because all of them had uh, they had farms, right. all of them they had access to water, all of them had uh, you know uh, time. They were farmers. They had over 37 years, on average, uh, 20 years of experience in farming. Mm-hmm. So there was a problem, and uh, we we had to tackle that problem. The only way we could tackle that problem is to come up with a solution. Uh, 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 to come up with a solution that is going to uh, uh, create sort of like a smart farm. Uh, on one end, uh, utilizing uh, the waste uh, by using it as manure for to farm uh, produce, and at the same time creating a market uh, uh, that is uh, timely managed, uh, that is um, well uh, organized in terms of uh, the needs for the market, and that's how Freshwood came. That's so we, again, we had to research again for the market, right? Right. <laughs> because now we had to give we had to give this firm as a solution for the market. So again, we went again to to, to research on the markets, and we found out that uh, the Kenyan agriculture sector has never changed for 50, mm. 60 years. Uh, we still rely on brokers uh, to to go and buy uh, things from the farmers. So it 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 was a complete nightmare. <laughs> complete nightmare. Well, it sounds like you're solving it. And, you know, one of the other interesting factors here is, uh, and this is part of the reason that I'm so excited about, you know, our upcoming trip to, to Kenya. I think we have so much to learn from yes. Kenyan entrepreneurs. 
Um, you know, yes. in much of the world, especially in the United States, we've become so dependent on technology that it's actually yes. it's actually creating distance. You know what I mean? Um, we're allowing it to, mm -hmm. to become a barrier to one another. And yet it seems like right now the entrepreneur in Kenya is really embracing this technology. And you're bring, you know, you're bringing a lot of uh, the, of course, there's a lot of distance between right the farms and the markets. There's a lot of uh, technological challenges, and you seem to be really, really embracing the idea that you can use this technology to bring these folks together and connect them with their markets and their customers. It, Jim, technology is uh, um, you know has proven to be really helpful you know for the development of, of the human race. Uh, let me just begin with this: um, we are able today uh, to be to be able to analyze. Uh, the consumption trends for over 4,000 customers mm. that we directly serve. And that we are, we are able to come up with a calendar, what we call the growth calendar. Uh, to us, we call it a gate, a data-driven agriculture. That is why we get the information on the consumer trends for our customers and came, come up with a calendar uh, for, 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 the, you know, for producing it. So in literal perspective, we actually grow for our customers. Uh, and, and to be honest with you, that minimizes a lot of waste. Mm -hmm. uh, farmers, they never used to get any data. Uh, they just wake up one morning and say, you know, today I'm going to grow tomatoes. Uh, they, they never used to test their soils. Uh, they never used to know, you know, the, the current market trends. Uh -huh. uh, what are the demand cycles? Um, what are people, you know, uh, 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 ordering more? Uh, and, and, and and all that. So we're able, over the last two years, we were able to analyze the orders of our customers and we were able to come up with this trend. And uh, uh, it's very weird, you know, <laughs> human beings never change in taste. That is one thing that we're coming to realize. Hmm. So it, we, it's becoming more dependable to actually grow for our customers. And that is exactly what we did. We took that data, we went ahead, tested this guy's soils, and we gave them a schedule. And uh, we, we, we put them together in groups and uh, they're working together. Now we are using and utilizing their firms as our warehouse. So instead, we don't have a zero inventory. We know exactly where we can be able to get carrots uh, for next month, the, the other month. So we are able to utilize efficiently uh, their firm as our warehouse. You know, it's that so, is how we work. It's, it's, data so, yeah, it's, agriculture. So, it's so interesting because... I'm so often challenged by people um, because you know, folks will ask me, why am I so focused on, on the business sector and on entrepreneurs um, f for this type of leadership model? Why am, why am I not focusing on, on the political world? And part of the reason is this. I've found that business people and entrepreneurs are the folks that are getting things done. You know, and all, all yes. around the world, there's such a, an inertia and a stagnation sometimes in, in politics. And I understand that. I mean, it, it moves mm -hmm. slowly. But business people and entrepreneurs are those who are really, really making it happen. Um, now, one of the things that's happening, of course, technology is, is joining us together all over the world. It's really fascinating. Yes. Um, but also, I know that's one of the challenges it, that people are talking about in Kenya to me, that you still have some very hard lines, right, tribalism and, and divisions of people. And you're bridging that because when you connect these markets like that, right, so it seems, again, it seems like business people are getting it done. Business people are breaking down these traditional barriers, and I think that's a the lesson barriers, we can learn true. everywhere, right? That, that is absolutely true. For example, the area that we live in is a predominantly Kikuyu area, mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, it's, it's uh, serving the cosmopolitan Nairobi area. All our 4,000 customers are different, coming from different tribes and all that. And these people are doing it because... Uh, not only in terms of economic benefits, but Nairobi has been attributed with a lot of poisonous fruits, as in uh, vegetable produces grown on the sewer lines. I don't know if you've read that. No, no. Uh, so that they're, they're, they're willing and happy to be able to grow for the people in Nairobi. What mm -hmm. that means is it's bringing people from two different uh, uh, environments and, and to work uh, for a common goal. And, th and that is to come up uh, with a social economic benefit uh, that is going to create employment uh, and at the end of the day is going to feed the people of Nairobi good health. I mean, good food. Right. And good, you know, healthy food. Exactly. And another thing that's fascinating, yeah. and I was listening to a speech by uh, PLO uh, Lumumbo, and he was talking Lumumbo. about the, the, um, you know, the use of, of technology. And it's interesting because, again, there's so many, as we work with people in different parts of the world, we see so many more similarities and differences. 
and he was addressing yeah. the proper uh, use of, of social media, for example, and the improper use. And, of course, that's a struggle we always face. Um, globally, sure. the, the 85% of the workforce is, is disengaged, and a lot of that has to do with you know, using social media that's during important. work hours and things like that. Um, how are you yeah. addressing that as you're putting people online really to do business? Uh, is, is that an issue or is that something you've anticipated? You know, how do you get people to keep when they're using that smartphone to do business? How do we keep them focused on the business? You know, the, the, when we were forming um, uh, this kind of business and we were working on a model, we had to work on a model that is going to drive a solution. Mm -hmm. And for, for somebody here in Kenya to come in and to download your application and to order and to sign up and to wait for 24 hours uh, for, for, for them to access you know, the fresh produce, there has to be a phenomenal change. There has to be a huge problem to be solved. So we were focusing a lot on how we can be able to uh, make our product better. And we had three goals. One is our prize. So we are able to eliminate all the middlemen in the middle. And our prizes are far much less uh, than any other price in terms of the same commodities that we're selling in Nairobi. The second one is the quality. So we came with what we call the traceability. We were able to trace 100% of all the things that we're able to sell to our clients, mm -hmm. uh, that this is something that has been grown by this firm under these certain conditions. So that gives a benefit of doubt to our customers that, uh, that they can be able to trace any single commodity. And you can compare, for example, the normal chain in terms of uh, agriculture chain in Kenya is the produce is harvested today. It's taken to a market. Uh, by the time it reaches the market, it's about eight hours. Mm. Uh, by the time it reaches again to the stores, it's about another eight hours. So you have that gap of about 14 to 24 hours mm -hmm. before it reaches to your, to your doorstep. And that is actually on the most efficient uh, food chains. Others are 48 hours on average. But for us is we have it in the morning, within four to six hours, you have it on your door, mm. on your door serve. It's that fresh. So the quality, you cannot compare in terms of quality with others. So the second point, in terms of quality, we had to come up with a better quality. Mm -hmm. And the third is customer experience. Uh, how we were able to, you know, uh, make your customer come back again and to rely and take fresh fruit as part and parcel. Uh, of their daily routine life, you had to give them a uh, customer experience. And this, we had to analyze our customers uh, very uh, in, in great detail. And, uh, 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 you know, we as, uh, as, as entrepreneurs is one thing that we normally uh, uh, don't take into great consideration, which is the comments of our customers. All right. Mm -hmm. So we had to go back the entire fresh fruit uh, business model has been built around comments. Uh, the things that if you go to application, uh, I can I can name them. More than ten different things that we had to change was well, as 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 a comment from our customers. They said, okay, you know, if you could do this, things could be better. So uh, our customer needs, our customer experiences uh, are completely different, and that is how we're able to maintain our it's, customers. It's together. fascinating how many companies still ignore yeah. that when you have instant, you know, uh, <laughs> response. Uh, you know, that's market research that, gosh, used to cost, you know, thousands of dollars to, to produce. And we've got it instantly just in the comments. You know, you can't do any of this on your own, you know, by yourself as a leader. It's it's fascinating. We've yes. been talking to a lot of folks. Let's turn inside because you scale, this company let me tell you, Jim. Very, it, very quickly, let right? Me, you went from zero to two. Let me tell people. you, Jim. Go ahead. <laughs> let me tell you, Jim. There is uh, the true definition of a company mm -hmm. are the people who are working in that company. Right. Without them, there's there's nothing. You can define uh, Tesla without Elon Musk. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, you can, you know, that is the true people behind it. So we, we I'm, I'm really blessed uh, to have a 26 member team that are really, really strong in terms of the core management team. Mm -hmm. And uh, 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 it, it really took me a lot of time in terms of getting you know, the team together. Uh, but, but thank God we have, I really have a really good supporting team. And, and we, we do things really quite first. Um, uh, uh, and we try to look for solutions uh, every day in and out, how we can be able to uh, make our service better, how we can be able to make our products better. I'm always fascinated to ask, to ask uh, business leaders this question. You know, how, how, do you yeah. keep, how do you keep this team together, and how important is the mindset and attitude to the success of your company? And you know, do, you, 
do you feel it's important to support the mindset and attitude of the individuals in order to make that team strong? Uh, definitely. Um, uh, sometimes uh, you might have a dream. And as you share that dream with people, they, they tend to own it. And uh, that is one of the most important things. Uh, for me personally, how I maintain my team is two things. Uh, through delegation and uh, let them own ideas, let them come up with ideas, let them mm. feel that they're part and parcel in terms of management of the company. And uh, you'll find that at the end of the day, uh, things, things are going to be much, much more easier uh, if, if things are done that way. Mm. It's critical, isn't it? Yeah. You, you keep men- mentioning this idea that you want people to contribute. And I think it was, uh, I think it was Dan Pink that did the global, again, it was a global survey to ask what motivated people. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't like the word motivation because I think ins- inspiration is a much more powerful <laughs> theme, right? Uh, you can motivate sure. somebody just by scaring them. But at any rate, um, That's true. when when he talked about that and he did that survey, you know, the three that, that consistently come up, and I think he's done this several times now, are autonomy. Mm-hmm. And, and you said that, you know, you people have to, to be able, right, to come up with the ideas on their own. Uh, mastery, yeah. which is that sense of, of, you know, giving people the opportunity to learn and grow and make themselves better and purpose. And, and right? make mistakes purpose. and actually come up with corrections. And you'll find that they, right. will, they will be much more better. If I tell you my, uh, uh, my immediate partner, mm-hmm. uh, we, we formed the company together. We met six, seven years ago. And, and uh, uh, we, 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 we had formed different other partnerships. And uh, uh, the only thing that brings us together and work in such a good team is actually uh, I, I know what he's great in and he knows what I'm great in. And, and that uh, gives us a boundary that we can be able to uh, coordinate. Mm-hmm. As in, I, I can't go in what he can do because I know very well he can do it better. Uh, right, yeah. And he has a sense of reliability and a sense of purpose that he is the only person who can be able to do that better. With that, he's able to take that with a more responsibility and, and greater accountability. At the end of the day, you'll find that they're able to deliver more. You just you just hit a big theme because, uh, I, I'm sorry, I don't remember the author that coined this, this word, but, uh, you know, the idea has yeah. been around for a long time, that idea of followership. You know, one of our key strategies exactly. here at the Sensei Leader Movement is the idea that in order to be a strong leader, you have to be a good follower as well, right? And there's times exactly. when you have to exactly. step aside and, and not just let. I mean, that's a horrible word. But encourage and empower people to step up and take the reins, right? Mm-hmm. Um, to be honest with you, uh, human beings, you know, uh, there are things we take for granted. Um, uh, uh, you know, this issue about uh, CEOs, entrepreneurship, who, are, uh, who have this much ego that they can be able to solve all the problems and they need people uh, to come in and uh, uh, ask for every single permission. For, for us, uh, every single person has a, has a duty. At the end of the day, uh, we are here to serve our customers. Mm. If you can be able to have one solution to be able to do that better, go for it. Yeah, you know, we have we have a name now for those CEOs that are st- clinging to that yeah. command and control type of leadership now. We're usually calling yeah. them failures. <laughs> it's, right, it's, only a matter, <laughs> it's only a matter of when that's, right? Every time we see that track, um, the sad uh-huh. thing is sometimes, you know, like a, a fish doesn't know it's in water. They, you know, the, these, these folks sometimes don't know they're on a downward trajectory. Um, yet we can see it. We can, we can really almost plot the exact date of their demise. Either they're going to be asked to leave, they're going to be replaced, or... The company itself is going to fail, and we see that that idea of command and control leadership is just dying. Is do you agree, or is are you seeing it a different way? Um, I mean, well, you have to I, make I decisions. See, I, we need that, but but that idea that you know, like you said, the person has to have all the answers. The per, you know, I've learned in my life, and, and again, you can agree or disagree. Well, I, I, but, uh, I, I if can. But you have you have all the answers, you probably don't have any, right? No, no, no. I can agree and disagree with the conversation because in Good. times there are different risk. Mm-hmm. Uh, that only the CEO and the top management can be able to take. Right, right. Uh, right. Especially the founders, um, mm-hmm. CEO founders, people who actually founded the company. There are special things that they can be able to do. They have that inner motivation that they can mm-hmm. be able to do to, to, to be able to take the company to the next level. They, they'll put their 101%. They'll do everything possible. Exactly. They'll sell exactly. their house. They'll mortgage again. They'll refinance their home. Those are the kind of people, in terms of risk factor, I think... Uh, uh, they're, they're the things that they need to manage directly or indirectly. Mm-hmm. And uh, because at the, at the end of the day, 
if a company fails, it will not be pinpointed to the, the team. It will be the CEO, you know? Right, it's, a, it's a responsibility or, factor exactly. more than, right? So, exactly. so with, with that responsibility comes with a, a measure of control. Now, the trick is how you're able to balance. Right. Uh, uh, you, you, that, that's basically the trick. If you can be able to balance uh, the autonomy, being an autonomous uh, CEO in terms of delegation and be able to uh, give people to be able to work in the different perspective fields, and be able to balance in mm. terms of the expectation that they need to work on the risk factors and all the, all these issues combined it's how well you balance them and that takes a lot of looking in the mirror and it sounds like that's what you do you know that that requires a lot of <laughs> reflection right uh 100% yeah um uh, it requires a lot of reflection that's true uh, a lot, Jim. Uh, you know, for you to be able to see your company 10 years down the line mm -hmm. uh, uh, and, and, and to have a projection of where you want it to be, uh, to have a sense of responsibility on your shoulders that, uh, you know, it, 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 it's, it's, it's highly uh, dependent on how you, you know, manage the company. Uh, the, the, it comes up with a huge responsibility. And, and, you, and, and that is something people, uh, most CEOs uh, don't, don't realize that, uh, you know, people will look up to them. Um, uh, definitely, yes, for in terms of leadership, but beyond that, mm. in terms of vision, be able to take your company forward uh, and, and, and dream and take and, and share those dream and make them, uh, you know, own it. You, ju you just hit again two so, such strong. I want to reinforce yeah. what you just said. The idea of vision. I do believe the vision. It doesn't always need to, you know, come from the top down, but it usually does. It's the founder that starts the thing. People contribute and evolve that over time. That's that's kind of cool, but it is that responsibility. And the other thing, you, the word that you that you mentioned, and I want to hit this because to me, this, you know, when I'm challenged to sum up leadership in in just a few words, I always lean on this one. I say. Leadership is sharing. A leader shares, and you're continually. You said it directly just a minute ago, and you, you know throughout the conversation. You know, you've been talking a, a, about leader, a leader, a uh, leader. One of the great responsibility for a leader is actually to teach and learn. Right. Exactly. And and mm -hmm. and to be honest with you, smart leaders actually don't know, uh, or, or rather, they they know what they don't know. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, they actually know their weaknesses. They know exactly where they're strong in and they're weak at. So they're able to assimilate all these efforts to be able to come up with one phenomenal uh, 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 forte, if I can, if I can, if I can add, mm -hmm. uh, to be able to uh, 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 not only uh, motivate, but also have the vision of the company and, 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 and to also listen to the people, strike a balance, you know, and, and be able to say, okay, this is, this is my vision. What else do you think we can be able to add on? You know, there, thereby you're giving them room to own the dream and be able to move forward with you. Exactly, exactly. And how yeah. are you, you know, your company is growing so rapidly. How do you yes. continue to embed that culture right to the front lines as you scale up? Because that's a challenge that a lot of entrepreneurs face right big now. Big challenge. Mm -hmm. It's a big challenge, and mostly here in Kenya in terms of talent, in terms of um, uh, uh, qualification. It's a big challenge, but we will definitely get that. Uh, what we're looking at is actually training people Mm. Um, uh, training, all, you know, the, the core team members on how we can be able to uh, scale up at the same time, uh, hiring, uh, you know, a bigger team and coming up with, uh, 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 you know, the same quality standard in terms of uh, management and, and all that. So it's it's a big challenge, specifically in Africa. It's a very very big challenge. I can I can tell you that, Jim. Oh yeah, you know, it, I, it's funny when people say, especially. And then fill in the blank because we hear this from everywhere. It's so fascinating. Yeah. Uh, again, you know, yeah. right? It, it, yes, the, the, I believe the world is so so similar, and it's it's getting smaller every day. You know, especially with technology. Let me tell you. Uh, uh, right now, I'm I'm facing uh, 17 companies who are trying mm. to poach my top five uh, <laughs> money. <laughs> uh, to be honest. Uh, yeah. Now, uh, you know, and, and again, in Eastern, in Eastern Kenya, we we don't nurture and grow talent. Mm. Uh, we look at the best way and how we can be able to steal and uh, rob, uh, you know, talent from different other companies. And, and that's prevalent in this country. For, for me, I yeah. definitely would like to have a graduate, uh, give them a, an opportunity and a space to grow. 
Right. Uh, right. And then let them learn, let them come up with their own solution. Uh, at the end of the day, you'll find that they will be really, really great responsible leaders in the different uh, uh, spectrum. Right. And if, if someone's going to leave under conditions like that, too, I mean, really, what can you do about it? It's probably better all the way around if they leave, right? They may not be fully vested at that point anyway. Uh, so far, I haven't gotten any person to leave. <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah. uh, Jim, it's, it's really important. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, it's really important for your team members to realize the vision. It's right. really, really important. Um, um, uh, they, they need to see themselves five years with this company. They yeah. need to see themselves uh, 10 years. You know, uh, They need to look and see what, in terms of change we're putting out there. Uh, what kind of things we're impacting. That has to be phenomenal. At the end of the day, if you have uh, 1,300 farmers that every day you're paying, every single day, uh, there's a chain, there's a phenomenal chain. People can go to, uh, they can pay for their school fees. And this, uh, the team can be able to see that. They can be able to see that change. Uh, it's, it's definitely going to impact a lot. Oh, that's powerful. It- you know, we're yeah. almost out of time. I can't believe this has gone by so quick. But I, it, something struck me the <laughs> other day. I was driving by a farmer's market here, and okay. uh, I thought, wow, this, you know, they need Eddie's software here. They need Eddie's <laughs> process here. Are you are you thinking about, <laughs> right, to connect? That would be amazing. Are you thinking about expanding globally? Uh, to be honest with you, we, we, we uh, expanding globally, definitely yes. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, uh, we need to take a separate time right. uh, because uh, my, my heart is in Africa. Uh, I, b- before going ahead and, and giving people solutions around the world, I will definitely want to alleviate the poverty standards in Africa. Um, the agriculture sector in Kenya is 40% of the GDP is country. Mm-hmm. So if I'm able to assist people and radically reorganize the agriculture sector, I can be able to assist over 40% of the country's population that is directly or indi- indirectly uh, dependent on agriculture. So personally, on my side, I think the solution can work globally. Uh, but it's better needed in Africa more than any other place. So Eddie, if people want to learn more, more about Fresh Pro, how should they do that? Uh, people can visit our website. Uh, we have uh, our application on iOS. Uh, we also have a same application on Android. We also have um, a web-based application. It's actually app.freshpro.co.ke. Uh, people can also visit us on www.freshpro.co.ke. Great. And I know we watched several YouTube videos um, from some of your television <laughs> interviews there. So we'll put those up as well so people can learn more about it. Hey, no, thank you so much for no. for being with us. And I, I really hope to, that we can meet in person very soon when we get to Kenya. No, no problem. Most welcome. I'll definitely need to take you around and see one of our processing centers. And the farmers, uh, the people who we, we are here working with them. And the lives were changing. It will be, be a pleasure. Absolutely. When I was a kid, you know, my grandfather and my father, they were all they all grew up as farmers, and I helped around the farm. We had a small, so I, I'll chip right in. I'm, I'd, I'd love it. <laughs> I'm ready to go to work. <laughs> so, all right. No problem. Okay, thank Caribou. you. Caribou. Keynotes, workshops, retreats, webinars, and ongoing training. Each program customized to your unique needs, interests, goals, and budget. Inspire, empower, and guide people to their very best. Learn more about Jim Bouchard and the Sensei Leader at thesenseileader.com.